Alrighty now, we are moving on to handles. This blade here, I have already been working on a handle for. I have it right here. Some flannel micarta I made. It's pretty thin stuff. It's what I used for my first straight razor. I've also got a spacer there. And this was my sketch and my design for the handle. And now we're going to create some handle designs for these guys, specifically this one. Nothing to it but to do it. Let's get started. Here's a hunk of walnut I have, small piece from a larger board, and I think if I cut a section off of this I can get two handle scales out of it pretty easily. I just placed my uh, my paper template down onto this piece of wood and held it there and then just drew around it with a sharpie. So I've got my outlines and now I'm going to cut it out on this bandsaw.
I finished up the backspacer, got it down to the width or the thickness I need. Uh, it's about the thickness of the blade, so or just a little bit under. That's good. I cleaned up the scales and I drilled a pin hole for the stop pin. So I have that now. I made some pins. These are 304 series stainless pins, 1 8 inch. And I cleaned up and finished grinding the blade. And I was doing really, really, really well to not burn the temper. I had a tiny little burn, like maybe right down here at the very heel, right up here at the very tip, which I was planning on rounding over anyway. Have more of a, a rounded tip rather than this, this uh, I forget what it's called. Basically, I didn't want to have this, this point here. I was going to round it off so it wasn't, uh, so it was a little safer to use, but now I burned the temper on the heel. That's probably going to be, uh, this is going to be in the low 50s to even upper 40s Rockwell, I think, at this point. But the rest of this blade is still good, still full hardness, barely, barely tempered at all from grinding. If anything, it was just barely straw. So having burned the temper a little bit right here, there's not really anything you can do except to re-harden the blade, <clears throat> but with how thin this is, you can't re-harden the blade. You, you might as well just throw it out or start completely over. So nothing to it at this point but to continue and finish the blade. If the handle material were some sort of metal, or even uh, a micarta or other sim similar synthetic like G10, I would probably epoxy the backspacer in. However, on this, it's wood. I can use wood glue. I decided I would mark out a reprofiled line on the, the blade with a sharpie, see how it looked. Then I decided to go ahead and follow through with that. And here we have a ground, reground, and buffed straight razor. The affected area where the temper was burned has been removed, has been curved out, and then the whole spine has been buffed. The, blade has been buffed, I rounded up the tip here. I think it's looking good. This sort of combination belt sander and disc sander is uh, quite a bit more common than your 2x72 belt grinder, so I figured I might, might as well break this out and use it to shape the handle of this straight razor.
Now I'm gonna round it. This is a dowel rod that's been wrapped in some paper towels, then taped over that, and then had a piece of, this is actually a 1x30 belt sander belt. I think it's about a 36 or 40 grit. Here's the rest of it. It's just taped on there so it has a somewhat soft backing. And that's good for uh, using it kind of like a rasp, but uh, a sanding rasp rather than a, a metal rasp. We have a facet right here from the grinding. So we'll take our sandpaper to that. We've got some pretty heavy sandpaper marks, but we don't have those facets anymore. So this is a this is a pretty good way to go if you want to hand sand something that you just ground. This is especially useful if you don't want to chuck this up into a vise and then use a piece of sandpaper holding it in either hand and wrapping it around and, and sanding you know back and forth like this. Kind of a shoe shine action. This is 100. Oh, can you see that? There you go. 100. 220. You can start to see the actual character of the wood, the smoothness of the wood coming through instead of rough sanding marks. It's almost done. After buffing and uh, assembling it with the, the temporary pin, uh, I went ahead and did a, a quick sanding uh, at 400 grit with a little piece, a little scrap of sandpaper. And now I'm going to treat it with the Howard Feed and Wax. This is a, a, on the front it says beeswax and orange oil, but it's actually uh, it says a unique blend of beeswax, carnauba wax, and orange oil to enhance the natural beauty and depth of grain in finished and unfinished woods. So here we go. pin, blade, and handle. Final time we're going to assemble it. I'm going to line up the hole through there. Stick our pin through. There's our pin. And I've got two hammers for this. I have a cross pin 
This is a very small cross peen. It's actually the first hammer and so far the only hammer I've ever made. So it's got a nice thin cross peen. And then I've got a ball peen, which kind of needs to be redressed on the ball. It has a flat spot, but this will work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it down to where the spacing on either side is even. And I'm just going to start. See that? I'm going to start instead just driving flat. I'm just not going to talk while I do this, okay? I'm going to drive flat a little bit until it starts mushrooming out and holding it in place. I'm going to then come in with a cross peen. That's going to drive it outward rather than downward, or hopefully it will. And the plan is to not split the handle pieces. That's the plan. We'll see how well that goes. Yet again, I have split my handle material. Well, I remade the handles, and I used the washers instead this time, still pe peened a mild steel pin over, and I ended up with a crack again. Fortunately this time, it's, uh, it's only on one side, not both. It's not quite as bad as the first one, but you can actually see it's a bit of a double crack. <sighs> Might as well sharpen it. Kind of stiff too. This is a diamond rod from the Spyderco Sharp Maker. And I'm just going to use that by hand to sharpen it. Six thousand grit stone. Find our angle or press 
the blade flat, lift a little bit, and sharpen. Oh, don't dig, don't dig. <laughs>